Hello you guys, uh, the summer break is over, Bitcoin Today is back. We didn't do any videos for two months, but it was also a very boring time. Not really that much happened to the Bitcoin. Well, there was one thing uh, this week on Wednesday, we had um, the decision about the rate hikes from the Federal Reserve. And as you know, they didn't increase the rate hikes, but uh, the outlook was very hawkish. And for this reason, we first of all check the overall market. And what we see here is that we saw quite a sell off um, yesterday and today. It's good possible uh, that we see a sort of rebounds today into the green zone because we are totally oversold in all 11 segments of the S&P 500, which is the most important um, index. Quick check um, to the rates, two years 5.136, 10 years 4.48, still totally inverted. So not really good for the stock market and also not really good uh, probably for the Bitcoin. So here we check the Bitcoin actually 26,657. This is on a four hourly base. Every candle is four hours. Um, interesting is um, we saw the sell off. Um, on the overall stock market on a global base, but not on Bitcoin. So Bitcoin was not really affected by the decision on Wednesday. So here we come to the market capitalization. Still on one is gold and Bitcoin is on 13 with 520 billion. Still good. We were up to 10 and 11. So we still stay on 13. And we come to the Bitcoin halving clock. It's uh, 270 days. We have to wait. And in the moment, it looks like that April 70 is going to take place. Why is this important? As you know, um, the revenue will be cut by 50%. In the moment, the miners get 6.25%, uh, no, 6.25 Bitcoins, and it will be reduced to 3.125. Usually, uh, with this date, um, from the halving, in this case, April 17, a new bull run should start. And here we come to the topic of the day, which is the Deutsche Bank taps Taurus for global crypto custody service. Now, what is important, we already saw in the last couple of weeks um, applications from like BlackRock and Fidelity and Vanguard for spot ETFs. And here in Europe, also things are moving. Uh, the Deutsche Bank already applied, I think, two months ago uh, for custody service. So what you can say is Bitcoin is moving to the Wall Street and is moving to the big banks, and, and that's a very good sign. So now we come to something new. Although we didn't do any videos for two months, we're working, we were working on a new model. It's, uh, you will see it. Stay tuned up until to the end of a video. It's called um, Real Value Bitcoin uh, uh, Model. It's something very interesting. You know, there's a lot of talk about Bitcoin. What is the real internal uh, value of Bitcoin? You have the same discussion, let's say, with gold or you have it with copper or you have it all the commodities. And uh, basically what it is with commodities that you have production costs and you have miners and... In, in, in terms of Bitcoin, you have electricity. And for this reason, we built a model back to 2014. Stay tuned. It's going to be very interesting. Okay, first of all, we, um, we check the money supply. This is something new. Uh, we believe that the M2 uh, US dollar money supply has a strong correlation to the Bitcoin, as you can see here, back to the halving. Um, due to, to the pandemic, the money supply went up, also the Bitcoin went up. And interesting, uh, since um, about a year, the money supply went down. So the Federal Reserve um, is uh, doing a quantitative tightening. At the same time, the interest rates went up. And um, this is something we always have to look into because it's the liquidity in the market. And um, this is in the moment certainly not good for the stock market, um, not good for gold and, and also not good uh, for Bitcoin. We come to the fear and greed index, we are on 43%, um, so under 50%, it's more in the fear region, but not so bad on the timeline on one year's base. You see we were much better, but still we are around 50%. Today when we do the video, it's more red, a little bit of cream. The market dominance um, is still over 50%, total uh, market is, is about 1 trillion. And around about 530 billion is Bitcoin. This is still very strong. We check the liquidations. 
And we see that the price movements in the last couple of days were not based on spot. It was basically based on future. You see, we see, uh, we see short-term liquidation, long-term liquidations. People have been stopped out because they have been on the wrong side. Spot, very interesting. We are close to 50 million addresses, so it's still going up. And this is what the future is, the spot market, very important. Uh, balance on exchanges, we have a long downtrend since May, I would say 20, since the halving. Um, today, there are only 30% of the total numbers of Bitcoin on exchanges available for trade, 70% are stored in cold wallets. These are the whales, and they are not interested to sell. We just sit on them and wait. And um, this is actually something bullish for the Bitcoin of the future, because as there's a um, um, uh, sort of uh, direction that the price could go up, there are really not enough Bitcoins available on the exchanges. We check the hash rate um, uh, according to the Bitcoin price. You see on a historical base, um, that they always match sooner or later. In the moment, the price is under the hash rate. Interesting is that the hash rate, doesn't matter what the price is doing, is always going up. That means the competition between the miners is always increasing and increasing. And here we come now to our new model. It's called Bitcoin real value. This is really something very interesting. We were thinking about how can you come to a real value of Bitcoin beside the fact that you have a market price meaning you have buyers and sellers. So we went back in 2014 and we said the number one important thing about uh, Bitcoin, because it's a uh, proof of, of work, is electricity. Number two is you need uh, computers, you need software, and uh, you need people, obviously, and, 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 and buildings and stuff like this. And um, in the end, you have to make some profit um, in order to be able to invest into the future. It's like a company, more or less. So, and what you see here, the blue line is the Bitcoin price. And it's very interesting by just checking this without knowing anything. At the last nine years, the production price, which is the violet line, that's the complete price uh, with uh, electricity and the overheads, is um, either under or or over, depending on, on the time. And it has a lot to do with the halving. Back in 2016, summer 16, you see that all of a sudden, because of a reduction in reward, uh, production costs went up. So um, prices were under the production cost, the Bitcoin price. But then shortly after, the Bitcoin price went up, production costs were under. And we saw the same thing. Uh, in in, uh, in May 20, when we had also a reduction in reward for the miners, and shortly after the price went up. Interesting is now, where do we stay in the moment? In the moment, the price is right between electricity cost, which is in the moment about $21,000 for one Bitcoin. Total production cost is $35,000. And the real value based on this mom model in the moment is $47,000. $1,250. So we're under this, meaning um, that the Bitcoin price is undervalued in the moment, according to this model, by about 60%. You can go on the website and can check this by yourself. It's a very interesting thing. We check quickly the Google Trends. Um, we are under 50%. And it's mainly driven in the moment by Europe. It's Netherlands, Switzerland, and Slovenia. So uh, here we have to wait that the United States come into the top five. Well, uh, Bitcoin on a yearly base, um, we stay in the moment around about the twenty-six, twenty-seven thousand dollar. Not much is happening. Still, from the bottom in November when the FTX uh, uh, scandal took place. It's, it's about 70% up, which is not bad. Volume, still a big problem, by far too low. We are on the same level, like, um, well, in, 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 in 2019, more or less. Um, not, a much, not much interest in buying and selling, and, but that's what we need. We need more volume in order to see an increase in price. Okay, and, um, now we come to our trend following models. We have two of them. This is on a monthly base, back to the halving. And what you see here is um, that we had this very narrow Bollinger Bands before the breakout. So this is something we will expect 
in the next uh, six, eight months as well. Volatility will go down. Uh, but important is when we look at the MACD that um, for a long time the controlling line, the MACD, were very much in line when the breakout came was uh, bullish from the downside to the upside. Then we had this DAF cross um, to the downside. Uh, the correction came with about 80%. And in the moment, we are back to what we have been in, in 2019, waiting for the next halving process. So this all looks very healthy and uh, more or less similar to what we have before, because, you know, we have a four-year cycles and we come to an end of this existing four-year cycle. Interesting is the RSI, it's about 50%. That's also good. So um, buyers and sellers, more or less each 50%. That's good. We see the same thing on a shorter time scale. This is um, now on a daily base. Every candle is a, is a day. And we see the same thing that we have narrow bands. We had a little bit of breakout to the downside playing here around. MACD, we had a bullish crossover from the downside to the upside. Again, RSI is 50%. So this is pretty much similar even on the short term. It looks quite healthy. We have to be patient. Nothing is going to happen overnight. Uh, I will give you later uh, our prediction of uh, how we see things will go on. But in the moment, it's a time to, to be patient. Okay, short term, uh, our indicator says, well, there could be $25,000, uh, but this is only for, for 48 hours. When we have the two models uh, based on artificial intelligence, um, more or less uh, checking history for 12 years, uh, and what we see here is we are right in the middle of this box. The box is the time uh, up until the halving. And uh, this model, this first model says we'll, we, we end with about $41,000. We are right in the middle of this box. That's good. Uh, the second model, which is mathematically a little bit different, says uh, we have two base cases, a higher and a lower. Obviously, we move more on the lower side. In the end, this model says halving about 44000 Okay, uh, Wyckoff, we finished phase A, B, C, D. We are waiting for E. This all only will take place as volume comes in, so we have to patient, be patient for this as well. Stock to flow model, historically was a very valid model. In the moment we were under, as you can see. So this depends also on the volume coming in and the price if we come back to a model. In the moment, as you can see, we are under. Uh, Fibonacci retracements, we stay in the 50%. That's good for a time when you have to be patient. We, we have been for a short time in the red death zone, 38.2, but not for long. We recovered immediately. That's a good sign. So this is the region we have to stay in and then to move to, to the 63.8. And from then, the bull run should start. But as I said, we have to be patient. Moving average, 50 to 200. Um, historically very important when you have the bullish crossovers, the golden crosses and the DAF crosses. We had this um, golden cross in January when the 50 went above the 200. In the moment um, we saw a DAF cross, uh, 50 went under the 200. That's not a good sign. But uh, we have to see in the next couple of days as we get reflected from the 200 because sometimes in, at this time of, of a four-year cycle, um, a rebounds could take place. Another thing is our seven rebounds. And uh, here we developed long ago our rebound indicator. And, um, well, the indicator says it's, it's a good time to buy. Well, no financial advice to you guys. <laughs> But at least the indicator said it's not a bad time to buy. Finally, we come to our most important model, which is the um, logarithm regression model. And here you can see the four-year cycles um, back uh, to 2012. Very easy to see. But always in the middle of the four years, we see the peak in price. And towards the end, we see a low in the price. Yeah, we are very close um, to the halving. As I said earlier on, April 16, it's going to take place. And when you go on the website, you can play around by yourself because it's a mathematical um, systematic in here. So you, you can go in the future and you can play around um, what the price could be. So finally, as always, 
our estimations how it could go on as I, as I just said at the moment we have to be patient also September will be still very boring it's not a lot of liquidity in the market usually we see on the overall market October November December an end rally I'm not sure if this is going to take place for the Bitcoin as well but it could be but anyway what um, is certain that um, liquidity will come back um, and uh, also the Bitcoin could take profit out of it. And here our, our price uh, predictions uh, for the halving, first of all, as I just said earlier on, we believe April 16, the price uh, should be around about between 40,000 and 45,000, coming from today, 27. Eight months later, uh, according to our model, we believe we uh, match the all-time high we had before with about $69,70,000, which will be December um, 23. And uh, another 12 months later, we will see um, the 50 percent of the new cycle. And here our prediction is about 150, 160 thousand dollar. All right. Thank you for watching the video. Have a good weekend. Thanks and bye bye.